Okay, welcome back. This is Silicon Angles, The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. This is our exclusive coverage of EMC World, and we're in Las Vegas, covering all the action of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We're getting down to the end of day two, which is, you know, dozens of interviews per day. We'll probably have over 50 <laughs> interviews. Um, <laughs> we hope we don't hit a wall tonight. We're going to keep on going. We're going to go out tonight. We're going to get the scoop. We're going to go where the action is. This is what SiliconANGLE and Wiki Bond do with theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante, Wikibon.org, and Amitabh Srivastava is here. He's the president of EMC's ASD Advanced Software Division, and uh, we've been unpacking Viper all day, and now we're just we started bottoms up. We started with the engineering team and now we're right at the top. So Amitabh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so um, you were formerly with Microsoft, you know, in the cloud you know, area, responsible for Azure and, and the like. A billion dollar business now, we're told by Microsoft, yes, so that's uh, good. So you're on to an next, your next billion dollar business, I yes. hope. <laughs> so, uh, They're charging so, for Viper? Very soon. So anyway, big, big uh, show for you guys. I mean, really, the software defined uh, meme is really the main theme here at the show. So how do you feel? Excellent. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of hard work, a lot of people have been um, uh, I've been working hard, we've been sort of like heads down, and it's good to come out and now and talk about this stuff, and um, and not only just talk about it, we actually have the product working, uh, so it's, it's it's really great. Yeah, so, um, well, what are you talking to customers at the event, what, what's the reaction been? Um, do they get it? Do they see how they can apply it to their business? What have they been telling you? Um, it's been very positive, and, um, and as you know, not only here, but we have been running what we call an early adopters program. And the, in the early adopters program was that we wanted to basically give certain set of customers, and, and we were focusing on enterprise and service providers. So we included both uh, you know, enterprise and service providers in the, in the program, and we basically gave them early access to the bits. And um, so then not only they could hear our PowerPoint presentations, but they could actually use this thing in their environment. Of course, not in their production environment, but in their proof of con concept environments there. And, and then give feedback to us so that we can go you know, help and improve the product. And that feedback has been incorporated in doing that. And the same thing we are seeing here more and more is the, the feedback has been quite positive and, um, and we are very pleased with it and the, also the it's a new space that we are entering into, and so people are trying to grasp what software-defined storage is, you know, what does this do, what is that different, and so there are uh, lots of interesting discussions. It's interesting how you guys are talking about for service providers as well as enterprises. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of overlap, obviously, but yes. aren't the needs of, of, of service providers and enterprises somewhat distinct, and how will your vision of Viper and software-defined storage meet those distinct needs? Yes, so if you look at Viper, it does two fundamental things, right? First of all, the, the, the foundation that we have built is really built, is design point is cloud, okay? And so the, the foundation that we have built is designed for massive scale, high availability, and geo-distribution. That's what the foundation of, of uh, Viper is. Then the second part that the, the Viper does is, you know, it decouples the control plane from the data plane. And by decoupling it, now we can go use the control plane, the Viper controller, to really go optimize a lot of those things out, right? That part is common to both the enterprise and to the, um, um, and to the service providers. But now we can also add data services on top. And by adding data services on top, both the service providers and the enterprise can use it in different ways. So service providers can use it to offer distinct, distinct services which is, can be distinguished from the public cloud guys. So for example, if I build an object on, on top of um, Viper, use, uh, you know, on top of Viper, you get the object that what Amazon's S3 offers or Azure's X-Store offers. But you get something more. You can get object on file. 
right? So now you can charge uh, premium pricing for that. So this gives the service providers to offer objects to their customers, but offer something more that the other guys can do. On the other hand, the enterprises can use that same facility and really build these cloud services and then use that as a path to move to the cloud. Different use cases, but can be there. Yeah, but essentially, okay. what Viper does is it's really abstracted that out into data services and really managing the control. So plane. it's a monetization strategy for the cloud service providers, a migration strategy for the for the enterprises uh, who want to get to the cloud. So. Coming from that world of what we, we talk about hyperscale all the time, mm -hmm. you know, John says you want to know what's happening in the enterprise, you know, in five years, look what's happening in hyperscale, and we've done that for years. We've, we've been fascinated by what's going on there. So, so how did you take the learnings of, actually, let me ask it differently. What's the same and what's, what's different from that environment of, of hyperscale? So the, the biggest, um, by hyper, you're talking about the, the, in the public cloud? Yeah, the yeah. Amazons and Azure. Yeah. Or build your own Google data centers. Yeah. So the biggest thing that if you look at, you know, and I'm, I'm going to oversimplify it, but it is to make a point, that what the public cloud did was it said, look, I'm going to go for massive scale, and I'm going to optimize the crap out of it, right? I mean, just going to optimize, like, so you can really drop the your OPEX down, and you can really, you know, increase your capital, so what they did was they said, I'm going to homogenize, 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 yeah, okay? Right. So they simplified the problem down and they, they pushed the, the spectrum into that, into that extreme end there. And it's great because for certain workloads, it works beautifully and they make the scale work out. The challenge in my opinion, the, the hard part that comes in is that the, in the enterprise, and I ran the vendor server business at Microsoft, so the, in the enterprise, the environment is just inherently heterogeneous no matter how hard you try it, because people have to worry about <coughs> compliance, they have to worry about cost, they have to worry about security, they have to worry about latency. So the environment is inherently heterogeneous. The question was, the hard problem is, that what Viper addresses is, can you present those same cloud properties? Okay, and include commodity too, you know, because you have heterogeneity, you got yeah, all yeah, of right. these things, you got a commodity too. But can you provide the same cloud properties over this heterogeneous infrastructure? which is the, and accept the reality of what exists in the enterprise and really provide them as a path. Because public clouds are useful for certain cases, but you're not going to run your NASDAQ trading system on Azure or, or, or S3. Or, um, you know, because they're not, that's not the design point that they were optimized for. So, okay, so can you provide those cloud properties over the heterogeneity? Obviously, you're going to say yes, but what's the price that you have to pay? What's, is there a trade-off? And I think the, 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 the that's where it depends upon, you can now offer different values now, and depends upon how much you want to pay for it. But I can give you objects on, on, a, on a very commodity one, but it's not guaranteed to do that. I can give you object on file, but I can give you object with six nines availability. So I can give you different flavors and there's a different price for it. And because you can charge different <coughs> prices for it, you get different um, capabilities. So that's why I'm saying is that right now, in the public cloud, it's a race to zero. Yeah, <laughs> it's a we've case. Heard, now we've said that on the queue <laughs> yeah. as well. It's, I a, think it's that's a race to zero, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. the, so the question is, it's a race to zero, it's fine, and you can fight that battle, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a money to be made there, Not, and there's no question about it, but it's a race to zero. Unless you have software. Unless you have software. Yeah, and, but what you can also do is expand that spectrum out, okay? Still do the race to zero. Don't go away from that, because there is value in that. But on yeah. the other hand, focus on what are the other premium services that you can offer, which can be monetized in a very, very different way. And, and to enterprise, and the uh, enterprise presents you that opportunity because they just have harder problems and different use cases. And that's why, and that's why we were speculating earlier about OpenStack getting a lot of attention, is it gives people comfort as a warm blanket, a bridge to cross, yes. even though it's yet not yet defined. Yes, it's vendor friendly. Correct. Not yet defined. No agendas have creeped in there yet. It's very open source like. So yes. that it looks and it's quacking like a like the kind of duck people want to see. Mm -hmm. And so that's hope there. So yeah. my question to you is uh, a quote we heard here at EMC was uh, earlier um, was HP, Dell, IBM uh, systems will vanish like the mainframe Mini and Unix did. The new platforms, Amazon, Azure, VMware, and dot dot dot. This was kind of a quote that was thrown out there. So I mean obviously, you know speculating about the other guys going away. So the, basically the big guys who don't transform will, will go to the track of the mainframe. Azure, Amazon, and VMware, these are the new platforms. Do you agree? Do you, yes. and, and, and what do they need to do? What does Amazon, these guys, that means there's only going to be a few guys running clouds. Well, the, 
I think the, uh, you know, uh, for the public clouds that you've got, you're going to have um, a set of, um, uh, it's, a, it's a very cost intensive business. You've got to build these data centers to do it, and there are few companies that have the deep pockets to, to run those uh, data centers off. But then you have a massive number of service providers, okay, which have the, the aspects that are there. And I think that, that those elements are going to come in where you have to build uh, uh, those capabilities and let the service providers also come in uh, and offer you know, different sets of capabilities. Well, they have scale they have. too. So you know, the cloud guys built from the ground up, I see a search engine and yes. a bookstore yes. create a cloud. Yes. So they self built that for their own reasons and then you know the rest is history. So that's kind of ironic. But then the service the, the service providers all have scale. Yes. So the, and and they might have milked SMS over the top services and all the things that we know and they all have their own technologies. So they are stovepiped. So my question is to, to, to tease out is how far behind are they? Or are they behind? And did they get caught, caught off guard? And what can they do to catch up? In other words, they have some muscle, they have scale, the technologies might not be aligned. Yes, and I think the biggest thing that, that a lot of them, they lack is the technology. If you look at Amazon and Azure, besides the infrastructure and things they own, they build the systems, they have IP, they build these systems, right. they have all the, all the pieces that are there. Google, uh, they have IP. Vertically with, integrated. Vertically integrated, they have yeah. all of these systems. Microsoft has a lot of IP, they also have a server business, so they have a lot of IP. And so, so yes, uh, the service providers have massive scale, and but that's the part that they have to develop, is the is the IP part to really you know compete with these with these pieces there, and this is the part where we can help them, um, is because a lot of the technologies that we're doing, like you know we are partnering with CSC, that we can assist with different pieces of these technologies out, leverage their ex expertise in the massive infrastructure and scale that they've got. To, to really, um, you know, uh, bring the space. And then the model is to give them a platform where they can sort of choose, I guess, th three, three vectors, right? It's performance, it's availability, and it's function, and that's going to determine the price. That's right. That, that, that you charge, and that they can charge sure. their internal clients or right. their external clients. And, and they can now build, remember, because by building Viper as an open, open platform, that they can themselves write the capabilities on top too. So it's, it's, it's a, we give them a venue to add new unique values or customize their environments for these, for these enterprises. So this is an interesting discussion. Let's talk about open, because yeah. you know, you get, you go on Twitter and you get yeah. people criticizing, writing yeah. blogs, oh it's closed, it's lock-in, yeah. and, yeah. and so forth. So let's talk about open. Mm -hmm. um, how do you define open? Why is Viper open? Where is Viper open? Where is it not open? Right, so that's why I remember I word, used the word open, I did not use the word open source. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, fair enough. So the 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 part which you look at Viper is the there are three places where where value can be added to Viper. One part where the value is going to be added to Viper is the the number of arrays that it supports. Can you add an adapter to add a new array to for under Viper? Okay. We're going to open those APIs up so anyone can add. Can, it's just like a device driver, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so anybody can write an adapter to, in, to put a new array into, into this thing. It could be the vendor itself, it could be the customer to do that. That's one interface. The second one is the interface for Viper into the different management stacks. So like we have already done VMware, we have already done OpenStack, um, and so can you use the API so that, or, or, um, so we have opened the APIs up and we have done some of the big ones, but anyone can write their interfaces so that you can interface with um, any orchestrator or any of those things. So that's the second part. The third part which is there is the data services that can be written on top of, of um, Viper. Can I let a startup come in, Aqua comes and Aqua and these guys which are, uh, you know, A4, they come in, can they write their capabilities on top of, um, on top of um, uh, Viper and, and, and monetize their efforts into the stuff there. So we have opened all three of them. What we are not opening up is the is the source code of Viper itself. Right, right. So the <clears throat> so the back end secret sauce. So that's you got to you got to pay for that. Obviously, that's yes. your IP. Yes. You're not uh, and you're not open sourcing that obviously yes. either. But so but you are building this platform in part on open source software and you're participating in open source communities. Is yes, that right? That's correct. Yeah, like OpenStack for example. So, Absolutely. So and 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 we will and as time goes on, it's too early. Um, you know, our intent, at least our intent is in that, to move in that direction. And, and once we understand how the, exactly the platform is playing out and things like that, and if it makes sense to open other aspects up, we'll, we'll look at it, but, but the, really the goal is um, 
you know, if you want to build, if you want to play, build Viper as a closed product, then you take a very different approach. But if you want to build Viper as a platform, then you have to take a different approach. Then you only way a platform succeeds is if you are able to uh, create a community around it, and that's the aspect that yeah. that that really we are trying to do it. But at the same time, we are going to make money. We, we well, are to make money. well, we were talking earlier about you know the old days and the well, for us my early days in my career in the late 80s, early 90s, multi-vendor was kicked around as a word. Yes. You know, multi-vendor yes. support, you yes. know. Basically meant if you had HP and IBM yes. and EMC stuff, they all had to work together. Yes. TCP IP is Ethernet adapter, yes, right. not token ring or whatever yes. weird. It's just basically connectors, mostly speeds yep. and feeds. You remember the days. Yes. And we went down memory lane with Pat Gelsinger too. <laughs> but, that was, but, that was, but that was driven a lot by the OSI model, right. which only really kind of worked up until TCP IP, and there, but everything was standardized. That's right. And, and and good things happen. Yes. So we said, okay, that's that. In today's model, in today's world, what is the equivalent multi-vendor? So we say open and choice is a little too vague. And to me, I think what we just discussed there was it's open source. Mm -hmm. Back then, there was no open source. So open source is the new multi-vendor. Yeah. Because that's, that's what you're saying. Well, because open source is the equalizer. If it gets traction, like OpenStack, that could be the. Well, the the question comes back is that the. Um, there is there is there are multiple layers in the system. Like you know, like if you look at Viper, there are multiple layers in the system. There can be certain aspects of it that can be made available. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the you're exactly right. I mean, you but have you, the but you don't have to open you don't have to open source Viper. Right. You have to, have to support OpenStack. Yes. That's that's that, what I'm that trying to get to. Exactly. Yeah. So you can be open. Yes. And say, hey, Absolutely. and you can we'll contribute, to contribute to the code. Code. Absolutely. So that's your multi-vendor angle. That's it's community right. driven. So just tied yes. to what you were saying. So it's tying it together. I agree with you. So you can make Cinder better, for example. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's yeah. contribution Swift. to the open yeah. source. Make Swift Absolutely. more scalable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because and our interest is in our in our in our storage systems and uh, that you know where or or are the aspects there. So absolutely, I think your 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 point is so well it's taken. A, so I see this as a, a as a TAM expansion strategy. Yes. So you, so <laughs> if, you, if you look at and I hear David Goulden all the time, and used to hear Joe Tucci say all the time, well, you know, we have whatever thirty percent of the market, but we're not satisfied with that. We want more. And you guys are by far the biggest market share, but you're not Cisco of storage. The Cisco's are what two thirds of the networking yes. market. So potentially, this is a way to dramatically expand the TAM. Now, we'll see how others respond. I mean, yes. if, you know, if some other large <laughs> company comes out with a big storage platform, are you going to necessarily write to their API? Are they going to write to yours? Maybe not, we'll see how yes. it goes. You know, but generally speaking, your objective, is really I'm trying to get to, if I understand it correctly, your objective is to increase the market that you can serve. Absolutely. As opposed to some companies, I mean, Oracle would be an example, they want to, take the Oracle stack and put that everywhere. They're not trying to go horizontal. Right. This is a horizontal this play. This is a horizontal play. Yeah. I mean, like, look at the things that we are adding, like with objects and HDFS. We are, we are trying to enter these new spaces which are there, where we traditionally have not played. Was there ever a discussion, I mean, you know, you talk about object and HDFS, you talk, listen to the Moritz, I mean, and a lot of what he's doing is very storage related. I mean, I look at Hadoop, it's a yeah. you know, storage system. So, so, so I think the, the, the pivotal effort very nicely fits into the stuff that, because if you look at it, HDFS is almost becoming a de facto standard. Right. Yeah. Right. So all the analytics that they're going to build on top of it will just work on Viper. So that's why if, I, if we use the standards, and that's the other thing if you look at it that, you know, like an object. We didn't get, try to mess around and come up with our own APIs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank we just you. said, let's just go, <laughs> Im, just implement S3, right? And we just did S3 or Swift. I mean, there are enough right, already, right? Enough APIs and enough controllers. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, exactly. You don't need more. So we yeah. just went ahead and made sure that you know we we adhere to standards. So like use S3, this one. So wherever we could, the 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 approach was just use the standard. So if that for analytics, is HDFS is going to be the standard. Let's just go use HDFS. The advantage we get is that now I can take a lot of the stuff which Pivotal is building, and that now that moves over and starts running on on uh, on Viper. Right, and obviously include uh, things like Atmos and Centera, yes. which are part of and your and portfolio. And yes, and we are we are we also support Atmos APIs, right? And that's the thing that we unify our Centera, Atmos, and all of the different object systems they've got. They're all they've all got their sweet spots, right? And if you look at and so. This way we can shield it off and let the customers use it and it allows them a strategy on whatever their business needs are, they can keep moving to different platforms over the future without having to do these massive petabyte migrations to do that. So I have another question on just sort of the, the, the control function that you guys have mm -hmm. taken out. 
It takes a long time to build a storage management, volume management, you know, data management, it's hard stuff. Um, did you do that from scratch? Did you borrow that from sort of classic E EMC, a little bit of both? <coughs> How's that oh, the, the Viper by itself is completely um, built ground up, okay? We do have um, a few components that we use from open source, but besides that, um, uh, the uh, majority of the entire infrastructure is actually being built ground up. We already had, um, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very, so you remember we have the suites, the, the storage resource management suites and the yeah. SAS suites, we have a lot of the management suites there. So the interface we use is, we, we built in the fact that when you connect to the, Viper connects to the arrays, it just collects a lot of data. It's like a host pipe that comes out with all the data splitting out. We can connect that pipe to anything that knows how to analyze it, right? We can connect it to VMware and let uh, VC Ops do it, or I can take that pipe and connect it to SRM Suite, then SRM Suite, uh, you know, because the, the yeah, new it doesn't version care. doesn't okay. care yeah. where, where the data is coming from. And that's the strategy that we went out and used. But all the lower level uh, automation, I mean, we showed uh, one of my, in my keynote, we showed that, you know, like right now, um, if you take recover point and you put it inside your uh, environment, there are 33 manual steps. This is our product, yeah. and this is all over the place. 33 manual steps, I had it all listed on my screen. Mm -hmm. 33 manual steps. Now with Viper, it's a checkbox. Yeah, and, and the thing that Dave and I were talking about prior to mm -hmm. coming doing the, the Cube here this year was you were comparing and contrasting some of the business models around open source, especially like Hadoop and, and normal Linux, yes. and et cetera. You know, people made money by service and support. Yes, they did. Yes. Mainly because it was complicated. Yes. So what's interesting is the most successful companies by our standard are the ones who are going to eliminate the complexities, eliminate the hassles of integration, and that's that's the job of the companies to provide value. Yes. That's inherently in conflict with the, with the business models or the folks who are promoting it. So, a little bit of a collision course there, <laughs> right? So, you know, I, I the, the red hat for Hadoop or the red hat of something might not ever happen again. I mean, what's your take on that? Because inherently there's a conflict there. We want simplicity, we want ease of integration. Right, and look, the Anytime you, you know, when even when the when the when the public cloud came out, um, you know, in the um, oh six, uh, in, yeah, yeah, that's right. When we even started doing the cloud work at Microsoft, right? A lot of people can come back and say, uh, forget even the business model. I, even inside people there, I'm going to lose my job, <laughs> right? Because literally, we could manage all of these things with few people. And nobody has to press an buttons. API. We never, we never, <laughs> we never had people sitting in data centers, yeah, right? If we're all sitting the on mainframe one floor, argument. It's, it's a simple, it's few people sitting in Redmond managing the entire infrastructure going on all over the world, right? So you could do that. But anytime you happen that, whenever the shift happens, I think the job shifts, or the or the yeah. or value proposition it's kind like, of like shifts there. It's like a, you know, flows out to That's another right. area. That's right. The DBA and, or the yeah. brake fix guy turns into another position. That's exactly position. right. Yes. Data and scientist or, and, and so maybe, you know. maybe it's not the maintenance part that goes out, but maybe, you know, the value shift, like, hey, should you go write data services? Do you, do you write yeah. to integrate with different stacks? Yeah. Different or, you know, and you, like a lot of the enterprises you go through, they have so much custom piece which was there. And that was the feedback everyone said. The, but the reason they were, I was using the word open was, where point was, you're not going to come and tell me, use Viper, but now you're going to use this management stack. Right, yeah, and we were Whatever, my, whatever and my environment is, you got to plug in into that. And, and enterprises have actually, because they have a lot of money, and they have a lot of complicated stuff there, they have built their own environments. Now, I would expect <laughs> the entire industry is going to move in this direction, mm -hmm. or, or else they're going to be in trouble. That's right. Right, okay, so this is the new, I mean, Unix used to be open. Yes. Right? Now it's sort of the, the other end of the, of the spectrum. spectrum. Yeah, so I would expect that you're going to get a lot of competition here. I mean, there's nothing really out there that's, that's like them. I mean, the closest, frankly, is OpenStack. Right. I mean, I, I would say. You know, but uh, but as, as I think you would you would point out, it doesn't have the functionality that. And, I, that and I want. in my opinion, is I think we're we're going to be okay. Um, the like the um, we're not afraid of competing. You know, if I think it'll be good for the storage industry to come up with various options because that's when the <coughs> that's when it gets exciting and then you know things evolve much faster. Oh, um, but on the other hand, um, with OpenStack, I think we're going to balance it because from day one when we come out, we're going to be using their APIs, make sure it is there, and if the customers have OpenStack in their environment, we will, we will integrate. Well, I'll tell you, there's a law in this business that I've noticed is this, the, the, the IT business is elastic. You, know? yes. you can cut prices, people will you know, buy more, and yes. so storage has been a constraint. Yes, it is. You know, both spinning disk, we talk about flash all the time here, removing those constraints, oh, it's expensive, it's expensive. It's, it drives value, and this, yes. what you're doing is removing the need to just have the container be the bottleneck, you know, <laughs> and, and, and all the money goes into the container. Now you can develop 
processes and procedures and algorithms around that container so the data can flow freely, that drives value and yes. I think grows the industry. So the more competition, in my view, the better. Yes. <laughs> so. yeah. well, we need more advanced technology, so yeah. you know, keep plugging away. Yeah, great <laughs> stuff. You know, the software models are changing. Dave and I are really bullish on, you know, obviously Flash and what that's going yes. to do to, to just do. computer science and programming yes. in general. Yes. I mean, yeah, I think, you know, the notion of how people handle memory management is going to be completely gone. As un, now you have almost unlimited you know, memory store that's going to change how software is going to be written. So yes. we are super excited. Now, Thank are you? you. Oh, uh, <laughs> very excited. I, 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 you we know, don't even work for EMC. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's just been amazing, amazing thing. That it's, it's great to see this, this all happening and now uh, uh, the next exciting part is going to be the date with GA. <laughs> Which is, you know, in the next few months. So Everyone's all there. smiles at EMC World, and then Gould is, hey, Tucci, where's the delivery? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. not only that, we, yeah. we stood up on the stage and committed, it's happening in yeah, all, yeah. <laughs> all happening in 2013, it can go back. Well, that back. happened in, in, in New York, right? Yeah. What's this going to be yes, available? Uh, uh, you, and Gould said, you, if you don't this start year. Showing this up year, year was there, and I said, well, <laughs> uh, you know, and it, it, okay. there's two of them, you know, at the time when you ask the question on the spot, the only answer valid is yes. Of course, yeah. Oh, what do you say? No, 16,000 people, no. Okay, thanks for coming on theCUBE, we really appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, we'll be right stuff. back, wrapping up the day. Uh, we're going to try to sneak in some additional guests here um, towards the end of the day, and then we'll wrap it up at the end of the day. Stay with us. Thanks for watching, we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>